Hello and welcome to this video about getting started with 60 FPS and C++. In this little video, I'm going to show you how to use our C++ template to get started with a C++ and 60 FPS application. I'm going to show you how to make a custom control and then integrate that into a user interface and control that user interface from C++. The overall objective is to create a little application that uh, simulates home automation and the light bulbs in your home or in your office. So we want to show uh, the light bulbs that were detected by your home automation system and we want to be able to toggle them on or off um, or toggle them all on or off. Let's get started by cloning our repository, our template repository from GitHub. I'm doing this in Visual Studio Code. Once the repository is loaded, we're going to install a couple of extensions to Visual Studio Code. We recommend a few of those like a C++ integration, CMake, and of course, our very own 60FPS Visual Studio Code extension that gives you syntax highlighting, diagnostics, and live preview. First, I want to show you our CMake file. Um, this is a standard CMake file uh, that uh, uses add executable and target link libraries um, to make a C++ application. Um, we have include 60 FPS here um, as an external package um, and link against it. And this also includes uh, a special command to compile the uh, .60 UI file and link it into the application as well. Now let's look at the little template uh, itself that we have provided, a um, little application. Um, that's a little C++ application uh, with a UI that shows a label, a, a button, um, and the label has a counter. And um, when you press the button, then the counter is increased uh, from C++ code. So this is just a little our template, and we are not going to use much of this um, in this uh, training tutorial. Um, so let's get started with our custom control instead. First, we're going to launch the live preview of our Visual Studio Code extension. You can see this highlighted with the show preview a label that is um, above components that can be previewed. So now we're going to create a new UI control that shall be a toggle. Um, this to toggle represents a physical button. Um, like for a light switch, for example, and we're going to build it as a rectangle. It shall have a bluish background. Let's fine tune the color a little bit first. And then we want to give it the roundish shape of a toggle on the outside. Okay. Now let's add the knob inside. Let's start with a white uh, rectangle. Okay, and now we need to position it a little bit more. Okay. Now this knob is on the wrong side when we want it to be white when it's on, on the right hand side. So let's put it to the right hand side of this area. Good. Now let's distinguish between two states, on or off, and we declare a Boolean property for this. And when it's on, we declare it to the X coordinate to be on the right hand side and otherwise we on the left side. So by default it's false. And then if we toggle this to true, it switches to the right. 
and now it's on the left hip. Let's try to do this a bit easier with adding a touch error so we can just change the state by clicking on it. Okay. Now let's change the appearance when it's off. I wanted to give it a bit of a grayish look. So when it's off, I want this knob to have a gray color and I want the surrounding frame to be also uh, to be a thin gray frame. Okay. Now this looks better when it's on and off. It's easier to see when it is in that state as well. The next thing we need to do is, is to animate it a little bit so it's a bit clearer that like a real knob it would change. Let's animate the X. Okay, this looks a bit better, but the colors still jump a bit too fast. Let's animate the colors as well. All right, smooth. This looks nice. Let's give it a fixed uh, dimension. That will make it easier to put it into layouts later. Next, I'll import a layout type that I use later. Now let's go back to our main window or our application window. Launch the preview for that again. That's the UI we've seen earlier. Now let's add a toggle in there. If we want this to become our light bulb UI. That's one toggle. And the toggle that I've created, I can use it at any time. This is like a new element I've just created. And let's also increase the font size. It's a bit small. Okay. And our application shall have a proper name. It shall be the light bulb manager. One very important feature of iLight Button Manager is the ability to turn off all of the lights in one go. So that's what we use our button at the bottom for. Okay. We'll also want to connect a callback from C++ later when pressing that button. So I'm adding a callback called Power Off and trigger that or call it, invoke it when clicking on the power button, a power off button. Next thing we should do is, is abstract our data model. Um, and it starts with light bulb. So we define a structure of a light bulb. But we say a light bulb shall have a location, that's a string, and it shall have a state, on or off. And we put all of the light bulbs into a model. A model is declared as a property and with brackets. It looks like an array literal almost. So I'm declaring here an all bulbs model property. I'm going to give it some mock values that makes it easier to, to do all of this preview. We are still, we haven't written any C++ code, right? We're all just doing a live preview. Um, so let's say we have uh, one bulb that is the living room. And let's say that is, uh, is on, there's light in the living room. And let's also add a second uh, room that shall be the bedroom. And the bedroom, there's, the lights are off there. And now we want to place our hard-coded two toggles with a dynamic number of to toggles, one for each entry in our light bulbs model. So we can write a for loop. This is our way of, of repeatedly showing elements. So we can create a toggle element for each light bulb and we can turn it on and off. So now we have two toggles. Let's also add the name of the light bulb there. So instead of just instantiating the toggle for each entry, we'll do a horizontal box. And in that horizontal box, we put the name of the light bulb first, followed by the toggle of it. Now this looks a bit better. Let's also fix the alignment. That's right. So now if I change uh, data in my light bulb model, 
it'll be reflected right away. So I can change it on or off. Still just on the mock data, of course. So there's one last missing piece now before we go to C++ is so we need to find out when it was toggled because we need to update the data on our models. So I'm going to add a toggled callback to our toggle um, and invoke that callback when the state has changed. Right. And then down below where the toggle is instantiated, I'm going to connect to this callback. And when it is invoked, I'm going to update the model by setting the bulb on property to the on value of the toggle. This way the model is always up to date with the UI. That's it. Now let's go to C++. I'm deleting the old code there and let's compile it once and show it. And this should look exactly the same way as our preview, right? Because we haven't done anything otherwise. Yes, that looks the same and I can operate it the same way. That's good. Let's stop the debug again. And now let's add a callback handler for our all power off button. We just declare on power off. For every callback, there's an on name of the callback function where I can specify a lambda. So in that lambda, I'm going to make it easy and just print on standard error that I want to turn everything off. But in a real application, this is where you would dispatch a call into your ZigBee network or do a dbus call to do this. Let's try this out. This should be called when I press the button now. And we should see it in the terminal output. Then. Let's turn off all the lights. Yes, turn everything off. Very good. In the next step, I want to uh, replace the mock data for our light bulbs uh, in the UI with uh, some light bulb data that we have created in C++. This could be created uh, as a result of reading some system data or, or, or getting some using some system libraries. Uh, but for now, we're just going to write it purely in C++ to populate uh, the data. And that means we're going to create a model in C++. Um, we're going to use a vector model um, that is, as the name suggests, just the vector of the data. Um, and that vector model shall contain our light bulb data structure. Now this light bulb that uh, we have declared as a structure in the UI, in the .60 UI file, um, has now a, a, um, an equivalent in C++ um, that we have compiled. Our compiler has created a C++ struct called light bulb um, that resembles exactly that structure. Let's have a look at that by looking at the generated code. So this class has two, the same two public fields, location and on, like we declared in the .txt file. Now let's populate our vector model with light bulbs. There's a pushback function on our vector model that is just like as if it was a vector and we can populate it uh, using our uh, imaginary rooms. There's a kitchen, there's no light on in the kitchen, and there shall be an office and that light is on because we're actually at work. When we're done, we can set this model on the generated UI by setting the all bulbs property. Let's compile this and when we run it, it should show the kitchen and the office instead of the mock light living room and bedroom that we had. Indeed, there's our kitchen and our office with the light on. Now let's uh, get a call back or let's get notified when we toggle it. And we do this by subclassing from vector model. Vector model has, or generally a model in 60 FPS has virtual functions in C++ and those are called when something changes. And as we change it, um, we want to get notified so that we can dispatch more dbus calls or something like that. So we subclass vector model and vector model has the set row data function. This is the one we're going to override. It takes a light bulb. And the first thing we're going to do in our overridden function is call the base implementation to make sure that the data, the model is actually consistent there. Now let's also just print on standard error again 
um, what the state of the new light bulb is as it was changed in this row, the, the ith uh, light bulb, just by printing text. But this is where we would normally then, again, do the real thing on the real hardware, instruct some microcontroller to do something, for example. I'm going to print out the location of the bulb that was changed and the state, whether it's true or false, on or off. Let's run this. I'll also close the preview. We don't need that anymore. All right. Now if I change the state of the kitchen, I get output bulb state changed. The kitchen is on or off. Same goes for the office. So we're almost done. One other thing I wanted to show you is how this also integrates with the debugger. So I can set a breakpoint into my callback on power off, um, and when I flip it, the debugger stops in there. So this works really well with 60 FPS and, and Visual Studio Code and C++. Let's simulate one other thing, which is that uh, dynamically a light bulb appears. Uh, we do this, we simulate this again by running a single shot timer that shall fire after a couple of seconds. And um, that's as if suddenly a new light bulb was detected. And then all we need to do to make this new light bulb appear is modify our model because our model is kept in sync with the user interface automatically. So let's say the, the, there is a new storage room and that somebody plugged in a light bulb and that suddenly appears in our network. So when I now fire up the user interface, uh, after three seconds, this new light bulb should show up there in our light bulb manager. There we go. The storage room is also connected now to our, to our system. Yeah, and this completes our little uh, tutorial video getting started with 60 FPS in C++. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something and I hope you feel inspired to try this out yourself. Uh, make your own home automation system uh, with a GUI or, or do whatever you feel like. Um, please give us also feedback, uh, file issues on GitHub if you run into any issues. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.